this video is on the endosymbiotic theory, which explains how we went from prokaryotic cells to eukaryotic cells. The nice thing about this theory is that you have to understand many concepts that we've talked about already this chapter. Uh, this little graphic is going to help us go through this, because admittedly it is a little complicated. What this is showing is it's basically a timeline, going from an older prokaryotic cell all the way down to a more modern eukaryotic cell. If we think about prokaryotic cells, they're much simpler than eukaryotic cells are. They pretty much uh, don't have a nucleus. All they have inside of them is like DNA and some ribosomes with a little cell membrane around the outside. So we start with one of those simple older cells. As we go through the timeline, I'll explain to you some changes that eventually bring us to modern plant cells, or I'm sorry, modern animal cells and modern plant cells. The first change it says up here is an infolding of the plasma membrane. This happens during endocytosis, when the cell's bringing larger things in from the outside. Uh, keep in mind that the cell membrane is made out of phospholipids, which is the same thing that the nuclear membrane and the endoplasmic reticulum are made out of. So those two structures could have easily come from this infolding of the plasma membrane that happens naturally during endocytosis when the cell's trying to bring in larger particles from outside. Part of that would become the nuclear membrane, which remember has pores in it, so that's what these little gaps are. Those are the nuclear pores. And then you have the endoplasmic reticulum, which has that kind of maze-like structure. And remember, is made out of the same phospholipids that make up the outside of the cell membrane. So those two are pretty easily explained once you understand the idea of endocytosis and the cell infolding part of that membrane to bring something into the cell. The next thing has to do with how we got the mitochondria. This phrase looks complicated at first. Engulfing of an aerobic heterotrophic prokaryote. So we'll take a minute to break this down into its basic parts. The first one here is aerobic. Aerobic means it requires oxygen. We know this about the uh, mitochondria. Mitochondria requires two things, oxygen and sugar. So the aerobic part just talks about that. It means it requires oxygen, which we already know. Heterotrophic means it has to get its energy from somewhere else. You should remember the term heterotroph from the beginning of the year. Uh, the nice thing about this is this also lines up with what we already know about the mitochondria. Mitochondria, again, requires oxygen and sugar. That sugar is the food that it requires. That's the heterotrophic part. And this is the interesting one, a prokaryote, so one of these older cell types. The idea with the mitochondria is that it actually used to be its own separate cell. It's a cell that was brought in to a larger cell through that process of phagocytosis that we talked about when we were going over the different types of endocytosis. So it's bringing in something that it's going to eat, because phagocytosis is usually the process of bringing in a food molecule. The problem is, the way the theory goes anyway, is that um, this mitochondria could not be broken down by lysosomes inside the cell. Instead, it begins to live symbiotically, endosymbiosis. It begins to live symbiotically with the cell. The larger cell protects the smaller cell. In return, this smaller cell provides ATP, an energy source, for the larger cell. Now, the big thing that supports this, there are two uh, pieces of evidence that support this theory very, very well. The first one is that the mitochondria has two membranes. Remember, it has an outer membrane and an inner membrane. Well, it would have had the first membrane originally. It gets the second membrane when it's brought in through the process of endocytosis into the larger cell. The second thing that helps us support this theory is that the mitochondria has its own DNA separate from the rest of the cell. The really important thing with that is it's not helical DNA like the kind we have. It's circular DNA, which is the kind of DNA that was found in older prokaryotic cells. So those pieces of evidence all point to the idea that this is how we ended up getting the mitochondrion inside the cell. It was actually a food particle that was absorbed by a larger cell, or at least it was going to be used as food, and it turns out that the cell couldn't break it down. It was much better just to keep it in there and live symbiotically with it. Remember the idea behind mutualism, which is the type of symbiosis, is they both get a benefit. The larger cell gets ATP, the smaller cell gets protection. The last one then has to do with plant cells. Uh, plant cells would have been sort of an offshoot of early animal cells. They already have the mitochondria inside of them. The same process happens 
This time, though, it's engulfing a photosynthetic prokaryote. Uh, a prokaryotic cell that can go through the process of photosynthesis. We see this with lots of bacteria. Many of them are capable of going through that. Uh, so the idea here goes the same way. It gets absorbed through endocytosis. That means the cell is wrapping its own membrane around it. It can't break down that cell. So that cell ends up thriving and living symbiotically inside of the larger cell. Now here, instead of providing ATP, this one, since it's photosynthetic, is providing sugar and oxygen for the larger cell. The larger cell provides protection for the smaller cell. And then over many, many generations, it just becomes a part of that larger cell symbiotically. Uh, again, the two things that support this is the idea that the chloroplast has two membranes. It has a membrane that the cell would have had originally. It gets a second membrane when it's brought into the larger cell through endocytosis. And then lastly, just like the mitochondrion, it has its own DNA separate from the rest of the cell. And again, it's that circular DNA. It's different than the spiral-shaped DNA that we have. So this theory kind of breaks down how we went from prokaryotic cells to eukaryotic cells. The last video of this chapter will go over some ideas about where the first cell actually came from. Thank you for watching, and I hope you learned something.